Okay. We are recording. Okay. You're listening to the Femtrepreneur Show, and this is episode five. In this episode of the Femtrepreneur Show, we are chatting with my good friend, Sarah Morgan of xosarah.com. And you're going to hear us have a lot of very candid conversations about the true reality of running online courses and a lot of the pros and cons of having multiple online courses, as well as how Sarah is now simplifying what she offers, both for her own sake and for the benefit of her students, which is just a really interesting insight into sort of the reality of running a course for multiple years. Hey guys, it's Mariah. And I'm Megan Minns, and we are so excited for you to hear this interview with Sarah. She shares so much insight. I feel like she gets really real about what her business looks like and how it's changed over the years. And I think this is going to be really, really helpful no matter what stage you're at in your business. So let's dig in. Hey, Sarah, we're excited to have you here today. (laughs) Thanks for having me. (laughs) Thank you for allowing us to interview you and ask you 100 questions. Not literally. (laughs) 100 is perfect. Um, So you and I have been friends for a long time. Actually, since before I even started Femtrepreneur, um, I was just running the Common Camper business and I found you and I was like kind of starting to think about like maybe talking more about the business I was running and having a different blog. And then I found your blog and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to (laughs) be friends with this girl one day. (laughs) I was like, one day this will happen. I came up with my whole creepy uh, you know, friendship stalking campaign. And then eventually we did become friends <laughs> it <worked. laughs> and it worked. So I've been like a fan of yours for a really long time. I'm a student of yours. Um, and I'm just really excited for everyone to be able to hear your expertise and knowledge. Um, so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and what your business is all about. Sure. So I share no bullshit blog strategy for the daring and driven. I've been blogging for uh, over 20 years now since I was a teenager. That's yeah, crazy. crazy. It's totally crazy. Um, I started out doing corporate web design. Uh, I did that for about, uh, I did that for seven years. And then at some point in there, I was like, this is so boring. I'm like creating the same box over and over again. And my brain was just like, this is not fun. I hate being at this job. How do we get out of here? So um, I used my blog actually to start my freelance design business. I got clients just by posting um, some tutorials and going on. I think Twitter was only a thing back then. I don't think there was no Instagram. I think Pinterest showed up a few years later. Um, But yeah, just jumping on Twitter, talking to people, sharing what I did. Um, and I grew a business after about nine months. I was like, see ya, left my job. Um, and that was a little over four years ago that I went from freelancing and then I moved into creating info products. So I started with eBooks. I have a, like a workbook, like a, you can buy it and hold it and write in it. Um, and then I jumped into courses and this is the first year that I've actually stopped doing client work and one-on-one consulting. And I'm just working with students now. That's awesome. Those are, I want to talk about those transitions, but first I want to say that I feel like you and Megan have like really similar sort of like backgrounds that like you've both been like making websites since you were little and like like really (laughs) super cool teenagers. (laughs) Yeah. I was, I was the coolest kid growing up if you can believe it. Not yeah, in middle school, telling your friends like, "Oh, I made this blog," and they're like, "I, I just got the internet. I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah, that sounds lame. Yeah, <laughs> basically the same. But I think that's awesome because, like, after so long, it like finally does become like what you end up doing for your yeah. job. You know, it's um, so weird that it's my job now. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you started blogging, were you just blogging on like Live Journal or like what were your, what were you doing back then? <laughs> Let's see, I did. Um, girl pages. That was my very first blog. I remember some girl named Claire had a blog and it was like purple and one column and it had like little asterisks. I can't even say that word, Um, but it looked really cool next to her name. So I copied the entire thing. I made the exact same blog. That's so Um, Or it wasn't even a blog. It was like, there's a picture of my cat. And you know, I like, you know, these bands. Um, and then I did um, Angel Fire, I did Live Journal, I did Zanga, I did Diaryland, I did Blogger. I just kind of hopped through everything because I was really into, 
using their like template creator to create a website and then looking at the HTML and figuring out how everything was put together or going to other people's websites and like digging through their code because you can view, you know, back then there wasn't a style sheet. There wasn't like separate um, pages. It was all like one really long thing. So I could go through and like look and find all the little pieces of their site and just copy whatever their code was and figure out how to make it work. So that's still one yeah. of my favorite things to do. <laughs> if I'm always oh, like, yeah. how does someone do this? I'm always like, it's so much digging harder through. Now, I know it's, it's all, so fun. Every, everything's hidden now. <laughs> I know back then you could find really like exactly how they did everything. Oh, that's funny. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You guys are cooler than I was. I didn't get an email address till I was 21. <laughs> I just can't, can't process that fast. I just didn't like, I didn't like, like I always, I was such like a, like a, I was so like against, I was like, I was You're like, so Ugh. I don't, yeah, I was like way too punk. I was like, no, like I'm just making these paper flyers and we're yeah. only going to make records and tapes and we're not going to put any of our music online. And like, that's not what we do. We're going to just play these shows in basements and like, we don't want a fan base. Like we're too cool for that. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you, like, so you were talking about, you basically, in my mind, I think of you as going through these two major transitions, one from your corporate job to your blog in general, and then from client work, totally cold turkey on the client work, or how you made the transition from client work to just products and courses. And I want to ask you about like, I guess, particularly the second transition where like, how did you know that it was time to stop doing client work? How did you, did you save up money so that you could like have a little transition period so that you could move over to courses? Did you have overlap? Like how can someone who maybe is stuck in the client work or in the freelance stuff and they want to get over to more passive income products, like how can they make that transition smoothly and like financially? So I started making products about two years in. So about two years ago, I started, I made one ebook that's not available anymore. That was like my starter guinea pig. There was no launch plan. No, like there's no email marketing. I didn't have an email list. It was like, here, you, I made this. Would you like it? <laughs> um, but I sold, you know, maybe like 50 copies. So it wasn't crazy. Um, so I did that book. I did a second book. I did the workbook and then a third book. Somewhere in between the second book and the workbook, I launched my blogging e-course. Um, and so by the time I really was like, okay, I'm done working with clients. I'm, I'm going to work with lots of people at once because I can help more people. Um, I think I had three books I was selling and like three or four courses. So I just kind of built things where I had time in my schedule. I'm, I work from home the whole time. So you know, I was able to like shift things around and I found myself prioritizing those, you know, working on the chapters of the books or working on lessons or shooting videos over my client work. I was still getting it done. I still had happy clients, but I was like really not into it anymore. So it was more of a gut feeling and being the boss, I was able to follow that. But um, yeah, so I started about two years prior to actually cutting things off. And then it was like the end of last year. Um, I was booked out like six months in advance and I was like, okay, I'm not going to add anybody else to my schedule. I'm just going to work through that. And then maybe at the beginning of the year, I'll see how I feel. And at the beginning of the year, I was like, screw it. I'm done. Yeah. So you <laughs> like already the had courses. like these, these other income streams built up before you made the transition. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us like what are, and this is a good time to like, tell us like what your courses are, what your books are called, like what, like it, what is your, I kind of like to ask people like, what is your product suite? What are your income streams right now? Like you've said that you have eBooks, you have a workbook, you have a lot of different like things, not just yeah. courses. So what are your income streams? And if you can, like, if you know, what is the general breakdown? Like is 50% courses, 50% eBooks? Is it like 80% courses? Like what is, my, my head. <laughs> how does it work? Like how does it break down? Um, okay, so um, I have, Double your blog traffic in 90 days or less. That's my first ebook. I have an ebook called Create Profit Party on Passive Income. Those are both, one is I think 25 and one is $29 right now. Um, I have a blog planner that's on Amazon. It's drop shipped. So I made it, I upload it to Amazon. They do everything and I just get like, depending on the, the month, like right now I'm getting about $500 out of it. 
around Christmas, I'll get 1200, 1500. Awesome. Um, and that's like totally passive. Like, oh yeah, I do literally nothing. passive. <laughs> literally passive. I don't even look at it. All I do is look at my bank account, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> still selling. I didn't do anything. Awesome. It's in my shop on my website. Uh, my virtual assistant schedules tweets every once in a while, but I think most people just are browsing Amazon. They find it and they buy it. Um, and then I have, so I had a bunch of courses and over the past couple months, I've kind of like narrowed them down a little bit. I'm refocusing some things and I'm going to break one of my courses into two courses so that it's growing your blog traffic and monetizing. Um, but right now I have the productive solopreneur, which is all like the backend admin stuff, um, how to organize your email how to plan more than a week or like a day in advance, how to not have a to-do list that you just keep adding to and it's like, you know, 10 pages <laughs> yeah. long and you're like crying at the end of the day because you worked so hard and nothing <laughs> got checked off. That's like the whole premise of the thing. for like six months before I hired Megan oh, was yeah. just like crying every day. Yeah, like I didn't get anything done, but I'm so tired. <laughs> I know. And then I have um, a free blogging course, which I just launched a couple of weeks ago called Dare to Blog. It's all of the like starter. How do you set up a blog? How do you set up a blog design that doesn't look like crap because you just don't have any design skills? How do you figure out what to post on your blog? How do you set up social media? And all like the little things that people just, they don't figure out because there's no like step-by-step -step guide. So yeah. I made the step-by-step -step guide. And then I have my big blogging course, which is all about building traffic and monetizing through things like affiliate links and info products, not putting ads all, all over your website and making it look terrible. Um, yeah, that's one of that's... the things that you taught me <laughs> was like, oh right, there's so much garbage in your sidebar. Please, please stop doing this. It looks like yeah. crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I have to tell everybody. I'm like, how, how much money are you making off of the, those ads? Did you make 20 cents this month? Let's let's just take them down yeah well we'll make let's make ten dollars somewhere else yeah absolutely um, yeah and I um so my courses depending on uh if I've just launched a course I'm making you know ten thousand plus in a month and then my ebooks are making a couple thousand um or throughout the uh throughout the rest of the months if I'm not in a launch month it's usually about 50 50. that's good to know and that's I have, awesome um, affiliate income as well so I oh, work right. with brands and get um, affiliate commissions whenever people click my link and make a purchase. So that's a good little chunk as well. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like pretty even. I feel like one of the things that we've been talking about, like Megan and I have been talking about and we've been talking about at Femtrepreneur is like how, I think for a long time I was like, I don't wanna have eBooks, like I don't see the value. Like if I could charge $100 for a course, why would I create an eBook that's $20? But now the more that we talk about it, we've been getting really excited about creating more eBooks and putting mm -hmm. them on Amazon. And that's what I want to do too. Yeah. Having that, like, it's truly passive. It's like you said, people are browsing Amazon and finding it. You don't have to like work so hard to get those people to your blog. They're mm -hmm. finding you. Um, and then I realized over the last couple of months, I've just been getting more into reading other people's eBooks, especially people who I know they have premium courses that they sell, but they do have like a $2 eBook on Amazon. Yeah. And it's crazy how many times I've read that person's $2 eBook and been like, this is so valuable. I am ready to now go to their website and buy their $2,000 course. Like how powerful it's been for me to be like, this was so valuable. I'm absolutely 100% going to buy their course. And now I'm like, oh, we should if I have that feeling, we should. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they do it. It's it's strategic. They they yes. know that that's like the one little step, the one little intro. Exactly. And if they get you into that by, you know, having a really cheap book that you can buy, you'll totally bite and, and do the, the next step up. Absolutely. Then you want more. Yeah. And it's all part of like, to me, it seems like you have this really well-rounded like, um, you know, we can talk about the sort of pros and cons of having so many products, which is something we struggle with every single day. It's like we have, we made too many things too fast. Oh yeah. I did the same thing. I'm like, I have 15 courses. Like, oh, <laughs> and now you're like, wait, now I just have a graveyard of courses. Yes. Um, yes. but I think, but I think you do have this like really good example of multiple income streams that all fit together and all at different price levels. Yeah, it's nice because then my my like email sequences, like you go, you buy this and then you go to the email sequence for the next product. Mm -hmm. And then 
you don't purchase that, I send you more and more emails. If you purchase it, then you go into the next email sequence for the next thing. So it just makes it easier, like logistically, to see where people are moving through. That's why I'm uh, breaking my course into two pieces instead of having that extra. Um, my other course was about passive income and creating info products, and it was like too separate from everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking some of those lessons and some of the blog lessons and putting them into like a level three course, which helps with the progression from the ebook or the free course into the paid course into the like level up course. So let's talk about that. So you have like in terms of one of the things, like I said, that we struggle with a lot is like um, the pros and cons of having multiple courses and the challenge of having multiple courses. Do you feel like your programs have like a sort of like step one, step two, step three? Do you feel like you struggled with that? Like it's just something that's so top of mind for us because we're mm -hmm. just like, honestly, we look at, we have like four courses and then we have launcher signature course, which we're happy with and we don't want to get rid of that. But then these other courses that we have, they're awesome. They get amazing testimonials and they work, but there's also four of them to promote, which yeah. is like, oh yeah, how are we ever going to like, just, it's too much, you know? I did the exact same thing last month. I was like, I'm going in six different directions. My students yeah. are going in six different directions. If they buy this course, it's a dead end. They're not going to come back. Mm -hmm. There's no like next step. So I took down four courses. I had a wow. Photoshop course, the um, info product course, uh, or like a social media overview course. Mm -hmm. There might have been one more. And I just took them all down. Did you feel anxious about like taking them off your site? Yeah. Like I feel like my, like I know that there are courses that I should remove from our like sale, like our shop or whatever, the same thing. But I'm like, but it makes $200 a day. I don't want to lose it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's hard. Yeah. After a while, once I realized that I was going to do the beginner blogging course and fill that gap. And then I looked at my large course and realized that if I break that into two pieces, um, I can add, I'm going to add in like an email course as well. The whole thing I can sell for 999. Mm -hmm. So I can have, um, you know, the entire product or people can jump in wherever and then move through it. So after I decided that the rest of my courses just didn't fit in there anywhere. And so, um, yeah, it was like awkward. I felt uncomfortable and like a little anxiety being like unpublish. Okay. I'm going to unpublish this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then you do it and it's like, oh, okay that feels good. Like now I don't have to deal with that. Now it's one less thing that I have to promote. It's much easier to promote. You know, I'm, I'm working really hard to get people into my beginner blogging course right now because it automatically moves them through the rest of the courses. All I have to do is get them into that one thing and everything, all my emails are set up, all of my tweets are set up, my community is set up in a way that I'm con continuously just pushing people forward and helping them, you know, figure out their blog and then they do the level two, level three, and then I don't know, maybe I'll have like next year some sort of like master class million dollar course or something. Maybe. I love the idea <laughs> of instead of it being because this is again, like Mariah said, we're kind of going through a similar transition behind the scenes trying to figure it out. It's almost like we all kind of started creating courses that are very topic based, like social media, webinars. And then you kind of realize that they're dead ends and you want to create this path. And I think we've, mm -hmm. sounds like you've already experienced this too, where it's almost better. You're serving your audience better by doing kind of like level. I like you calling them levels, like level one, two, yeah. three. And instead of it being like, oh, want to learn webinars? Great. Want to make your first product? Great. It's almost like, what does the big, the first, what's the whole first phase, every component for the first phase. Yeah. And then once someone's at that level, then the whole next phase and kind of taking all of those original principles to the next level. So I think that's something we've been talking about doing. And I almost feel like maybe that's a trend that we're going to start seeing in courses is like a transition from just random topic based where you kind of have to piece them all together yourself and people actually kind of providing the path. So I, I'm excited to hear that you're doing that too. And that's kind of something you've seen because I feel like that's what we want to do, basically. I think that's what everybody did. It was like, oh, courses. We can make courses online and, and you know, we make so much more income doing this. Mm -hmm. And so we just exploded courses everywhere. Like, this is everything <laughs> I know about everything. And I've made 15 courses now. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went, oh, crap. Like, none of this stuff works together. It doesn't all yeah. support my, like, whole blogging thing. Mm -hmm. So then I did a lot of work. And now I have to, like, rein it back in. And some of that work is just 
it's going down the toilet. It's yeah, I can't use it anymore. Oh my gosh, this is like so like it's actually really encouraging. Um, I feel like you're giving me like the balls to like <laughs> like after we get off, I'm gonna go and unpublish courses that I have been on the fence about for like <laughs> literally for six months. I've been saying to Megan, this doesn't belong. It's so like it's just like this dangling thing. Why is it still up there? Like I don't get it. You know, like we work so hard to try to like make it like all makes sense, but yet still people are confused. Like, wait, like, what do I do first? Like, I heard you say that webinars are awesome, but like, I don't have a website yet. And like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you could do webinars before you have a website. Like you can, but like, it's, it's like, it's so hard. And I think it helps to catch those people that are like, I don't know where in all of this I'm supposed to jump in. And I like your page that you have set up now. That's like, do this, do this, do mm-hmm. this, do this. And once my courses are done, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm totally going to copy your page. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> good. But yeah, it's going to say like level one or like, you know, intro and then step level one, two, three, step two, step three. Yeah. It makes it so much easier. And then you don't have to field emails and answer so many Definitely. questions because it's obvious what people are supposed to do. Yeah. Cause when I- we, when we launch our signature course, which is about creating signature courses, um, that's always a question we have to field is like what this course versus this course, or how do they compare? How do they fit together? And I think we really saw that in our last launch of like, how can we answer this question innately like it's written out on our FAQ but like not everyone's Mm -hmm. reading it so like what can we be doing better that innately answers it and I feel like taking this type of approach does that like it's it's clear before they see right when they see any of your products kind of how would they all fit together yeah yeah and one thing that's really helpful for me um right now this is going to air after Badass Babes closes unfortunately um but I am pushing people Like everything I'm doing is like how to start a blog, how to start a blog. You need a blog, how to start a blog. And I'm cramming as many people into dare to blog as I can because I know in two, one, one week, um, (laughs) Badass Babes is going to open and all of those people or a lot of those people will be able to go into Badass Babes then. So it allows me to organize my year a little bit better saying I got to promote this now so that all of these people are ready. Yeah. So that I'm not opening Badass Babes and getting 15 emails from people saying, oh, I really want to join this, but I don't have a blog. Mm -hmm. They need a little bit of time, especially if they're just starting. So I launched it three weeks in advance, and then I'm working with people and kind of like pushing them, motivating them to get them all set up so that when Badass Babes opens, they're all set, they're ready to go, and I don't have any of those stragglers who at the last minute decide they want to start a blog, and this is a, a level two course. Absolutely. And I think one of the, like, we always say, like, teach step one for free. And that's like exactly what you're doing. So you decided, Mm -hmm. you know what, some of this really basic information should just be a free course to prime people, get them. Essentially, you're teaching like the 101 course that they need as a foundation in order to be successful in the paid course. Yeah. And one of the things like I was really surprised I sent out a reader survey maybe the week before I launched Dare to Blog because I wanted to just make sure I had like all of the stuff that people were going to be trying to figure out in that course. And I had like 50% of the people that took it. I think I had like 300 or 400 people. 50% of those people told me they didn't have a blog at all. And I blog about blogging. So I was like, why are you on my list and on my site? And how do you not have a blog already? Yeah. Um, we and then I you set, set up. <laughs> I know. And then I set my goal to be like in the first week I want – 500 people to sign up for this. And I had, uh, I think I woke up at like 8 a.m. the first day and I already had 400 people that had signed up. That's awesome. So having that free course, I had, I, it's been open for two, almost two weeks now and I have 1400 people in it. That's, that's awesome. So it, that and that's your like VIP beyond. list for your Badass Babes launch. Like mm-hmm. that's your VIP. Those people are like the most likely to convert. They're like people who have showed you that they're extra warm leads. Yep. It's awesome. They're like that extra warm. They're so warm. They've been like <laughs> microwaved just a little bit. <laughs> um, so let's talk about like Badass Babes because it's, to me, I think of it as your your signature course. It's mm-hmm. you've had, how long have you had Badass Babes? It's been around for uh, about two and a half years. Two and a half years. Um, and when, like it's evolved over time. Um, you have already kind of talked about how it's changing now, breaking into two pieces, but mm-hmm. how do you know when it's time to evolve? Like how many iterations has it been through? Cause I think when people <laughs> launch their courses, what I'm trying to get at people launch their courses, they think it has to be perfect. And that like, that's their final version. 
And like all of us are sitting here saying that we don't have it figured out. We revamp our courses every six months. Like there, we are constantly thinking, you know what? That course is, it sucks. We have to redo it. Uh-huh. It, doesn't oh, yeah. fit. it doesn't work. How, how many times have you, you know, evolved badass babes into what it's becoming? And like, how do you know it's time to fix it or to update it? And I don't know, that's that whole process. So when I started, there were not courses on creating courses. And I was like, eh, I'm just going to figure it out. Um, because I wanted to do something interactive. So I took the content from my ebook and expanded it. The first time I ran it, I ran it inside of a Google community. And I had three people, to just give you a baseline, um, who are still in my community and active, which is awesome. Um, So I ran it inside the community. I posted the lessons in the community once a week, and then I did weekly hangouts. So I think like the Monday I would post it and then Tuesday I think I ran a hangout which was just like a text chat. They always showed up. They were super engaged. Um, But it was a lot of work on my part and I wanted it to be a little bit more passive. So the second time I ran it, so the second session, and I ran it I think four times that first year. The second session I ran it as an email course. So the emails went automatically through MailChimp I want to say. Um, and I ran it with the community in Google. The third time I ran it, I think this is maybe where you jumped in, Mariah. Yeah. I ran it, um, there was a course site, I ran it through Wishlist Member. Yep. Which was okay, but I had a lot of like tech support to do with people figuring out how to get into the lessons or find the past lessons. Mm-hmm. And I was paying for Wistia to host my video. So it was like kind of cobbling together a bunch of stuff. Uh, the fourth time I ran it, I switched it back to email, I believe. Um, And I moved the community to Slack. And then I finally moved it over to Teachable, Mm -hmm. which has all their own video. Um, All the emails can be sent through them. Um, So there was a course site that people could log into. The community stayed in Slack. Um, Yeah, I think. So then... um, This is like five different platforms in like a year, which is like you've... Yeah. You just, it's so like, I mean, but that's what people have to know is like, it's not perfect the first time you fucking started as a Google plus community and it grows from there. Yeah. 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 And then you realize like, okay, now I have 30 people in the course and this is not going to work anymore. Now I have 50 people and this community is not going to work anymore. You know, a lot of the issues were tech support issues. That first day I would spend the entire day answering emails logging into people's accounts and getting them into whatever they needed to get into. So a lot of it was moving away from things and moving to Teachable and Slack to make it so I can be like, here's the course. They can get into the lessons. They can see the videos. They can get into the community without any issue, which is awesome. I don't have to do anything. I usually have like one person that I have to help. Yes. Um, And then in January, I went through and redid all of my videos, which was so much work and so much time. And I'm like adjusting the course now. So, you know, the next couple months I'll be remaking more videos. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's like a compulsive thing though. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just fix this up a little bit. I'll just make five new videos. And it's like you want it to be good and you want mm-hmm. – and it's almost like at like we have that like curse of knowledge or whatever where you're like, oh my gosh, like that thing that I said, like – it's, it, it still rings true, but like, there's something else I could add. That's like, uh, that I figured out since then. I mean, we spent three months literally from January till March. All we did was update your first one K and like, it was such a huge project. It was such like, and it's, it's not even that like, it wasn't good. It was people were getting good results and like, you know, our students have get better results than we do, but like yeah. they, but like in our minds, it was just like, Oh my God, it's so out of date. Like I can't uh-huh. believe. And like, we yeah. just, as the owner, you're so like protective of like it being really good. I told myself when I did those videos, I was like, I'm not redoing these videos for a year. Yeah. So I think some of them will get updated. I'm going to try to not remake all of them because there's yeah eight, 10, there's like 10 videos in it. Ugh. I know you have way more videos in oh yours. Gosh. I can't even. I want to say we have like, I mean, it's not good. I don't want to tell people how many videos are in Launcher Signature course, which is like a totally different beast than our other courses. It's like very, very I think you detailed. told me once and I was like, you yeah, I was insane. like, and you were like, that is crazy. Make sense. Are you on camera for all of those videos or is it slides? Slides. 
Okay, because I was on camera for all, I think eight of out of the 10 videos, it was me like this. Yeah. So I had to like do my hair. Yeah. I had to make, I'm in San Diego, so it's hot as balls. (laughs) I'm just like sweating. Do I still look pretty? (laughs) This is like, yeah, no, this is, these videos are like me in my pajamas, but sound oh, sounding enthusiastic but like I didn't have to get dressed up which is good <laughs> I need to do more of those because the getting dressed and doing my makeup and hair is yeah uh, that's a lot of effort yeah well. and I felt the way that I learn is like I gotta see it on a screen like I can't I can't just hear you say something and, and absorb it so to me I was like okay this I don't have to be on camera and hopefully the visual aids and the words on the screen will stick yeah. better yeah, I was adding like screenshots and like yeah. text over my video. It would That's take crazy. me like five hours to edit one of those. Things. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> but you put so much work into it. And it's like yeah. this is a course that ha- you've had for two and a half years, and you're going to keep however many evolutions it goes through, you're going to keep, you still have this course, you have the foundation, yeah. and you're going to keep making money from it, and you're going to keep launching it and selling it. And, you know, it's your, it's your like main thing. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the lessons, I'd probably say like, maybe like a third of the lessons don't ever have to be changed. They're really going to stay the same unless there's like some crazy, I don't know. I think most of them will, will be fine like that. I so love, overall, oh, oh sorry. sorry. I was just going to say, I love the glimpse of the reality of running a course, especially like over a few years. And I think that's, I know we've already said this, but I just feel like hammering at home again. Cause I feel like we deal so much with emails and people who want to create courses who struggle so much with like the tech side of things and like wanting Mm -hmm. to have the perfect thing right before they start or people asking what if questions about 10 steps down the line when they haven't even started. So I just like, I I hope everyone's listening and just absorbing the fact that like, it's okay for it to change and evolve and just do your best with what you have. And you're going to learn those lessons. Even if you think you have the perfect puzzle, you know, pieces will change as time goes on, as you learn lessons, you know, like, we're making changes now based on decision, you know, just because things change and you realize that there are better ways you can do things after you've had more experience. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop get rambling people into your courses. <laughs> um, Cause especially the first couple of times I didn't have that many students and I didn't know what I was doing. Once the students got in and I saw like, okay, this is an issue. Like getting people into the community on Google is a pain in the butt that needs to be changed. Yeah. And nobody was like, oh, I don't want to move. Why are we moving somewhere else? Like, you know, anytime you make a change, you're making it better. You're not like, we're going to make this part of it shittier. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Especially breaking the the course into two courses is a big change. But all the people that are already in it are going to get both of those. There's going to be more information in them. There's going to be two communities. So they're getting more out of it. Nobody's ever going to be like, well, you changed the course and now I hate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. You're just making it better. That's so yeah. true. And people are like, oh my gosh, like what if I change it halfway or what if I add – what if I forget to put something in the course and then I add it later? And I'm like, you know that that's, ju- that's just like a surprise bonus that people mm-hmm. are going to be excited about, not this thing of like – you know, oh my gosh, everyone's going to think I'm so stupid because I forgot to add that video no, about this You make a bonus thing. module yeah. and you just drop all the extra stuff People that you forgot it. into there. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, this is awesome. She's Thank adding you new so stuff. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. It's all about the <laughs> attitude you have about it. It's like yeah. the way that you frame it kind of makes all the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so like overall, I feel like we've both kind of made, I think feel like we've both had this journey and gone down that path of like, making a million courses and mini master classes and like oh, templates. Yeah. Just like we made so many things so fast. And I feel like a lot of people get into that trap. That's like, if I, if every month I can launch a new $97 course or $49 <laughs> course, then like I can keep this, like they get like, um, like the launch high, but it's this very mm-hmm. like temporary, um, sort of, unsustainable, like, oh, if I just create a 40, you know, you, you do it once and you're like, holy shit, this is crazy. And you want to do it again. So you're like, okay, I'll just make a new $97 course. And I'll just do that every single month. And we have students that have said that that's their plan. And I'm like, no, 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 like, please don't (laughs) like where you're suffering the consequences now. Do you feel like overall the, you are hundred percent confident that like simpler is better? Yeah, I think a simpler plan. It's better for me as a creator because now I know like this goes into this, this goes into this, this goes into this. And there's not 
so many buckets and so many things that I'm like running and I have a virtual assistant too. And I'm still, when I had that many courses, I was like, now promote this. Now we're going to promote this. Now we're going to promote yeah. this. And it's, it's just too much. And then it's easier for your students to figure out like, okay, I already have this part of it finished. Where in these like three, four courses am I going to start? Mm -hmm. They don't need the beginning one. So they, it makes it easier to figure out on their end. And the, if it's easier to figure out, they're more likely to actually pay you and buy things. Yeah, absolutely. That's really encouraging. I think, I think we've just been thinking about this so much as like, how can we simplify? Can we get rid of those like little, you know, $49 things yeah. that are plaguing our, our life and like things that we don't promote. It's like you said, it's mm -hmm. like you, when I look at our promotion calendar, um, which is just like really focused on launch signature course launches twice a year and everything else is just like an afterthought or like supplementary. And if you look at like the numbers in our business, it's like 80% of our revenue comes from that one mm -hmm. course and everything yeah. else is like tiny little, you know, tiny little single digit percentages that make up the other 20%. And it's not even like, what's the point? Yeah, if you launch like a bunch of little courses, those first ones, you're going to forget about them. People are going to yeah. forget about them. If they don't connect together, you don't have any way to keep selling them. Yeah. So it just makes it it's so much easier. Like if you want multiple courses, do level one, level two, level three. That's it. So I much easier. Perfect. Like beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yeah, like, if you want to make like an extra course, like an extra bonus thing, don't make it a whole course. Make it uh, a, like a quickie paid workshop or make it a bonus inside one of your courses. Yeah. Make it an upsell. I mean, like mm -hmm. courses can have upsells that are private, but they're not out on your shop page confusing people. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. I'm excited now. I, do. I feel <laughs> validated in my decision to like step back a little bit, get rid of some things and like reorganize. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like more confident in our, cause it's scary. It's scary to be like, oh my gosh, like when I made that course, I it's, it's so good, but like, just because it's good, you know, it's like we could make a hundred courses and they'd all be good and valuable, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we should. Did you yeah. struggle with the like emotional attachment of like a course? Cause that's something Ryan and I've talked about is like, we <laughs> have an emotional, sales page down. I love it. <laughs> we have like an emotional <laughs> attachment to the name. Like if we ever yeah. wanted to restructure, yeah. you know, some of our, not our, in, you know, some of our other courses, like your first one K or webinar rockstar, it's like, we have such an emotional attachment to the name and the brand and how they are now. That's been like truly hindering us from evolving something. Cause it's like, but no, I love your first one K, you know, like, was yeah, that a struggle you been, went through uh, or no? Mine has been more like I put like 40 hours into yeah. writing this and shooting video and editing video, probably more than 40 hours. I put so much time into this yeah. and then I put so much time into redoing the entire thing. So it was like bigger and better. And now I'm just going to like unpublish and it's gone. Like, yeah, oh, such a bummer. That was so much time. Yeah. Mine is more like about that and less about loving my course so much. <laughs> I don't want to part with it. <laughs> no, I but think it's that's still true. there. I put so much work into it and to make yeah. that really brave decision. That's like, you know what? overall, I need simplicity in my business and I need this to work better. And like, it's so hard. It's like the, you know, sunken cost of time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So what are you struggling with right now? Like we've made, you've made these changes and you're still making more, but is there like one thing in your business that you're kind of trying to improve or that you're struggling with right now? Oh, it's video editing. <laughs> That's like, uh, I can shoot a video. I've got that down. I can shoot like a 10, 20 minute video in about an hour and that's good. But then when I have to do the editing and like add titles and screenshots, that takes me like five hours. It's yeah. like a whole day to do a video. So yeah, I'm struggling with um, possibly like giving that to someone else and you know, I'm like a control freak. So I'm like, yeah. this goes like this and this goes like <laughs> this. Um, yeah. So at some point it's going to, it's going to be passed off to someone else. But right now, yeah, trying to like be fast and, uh, you know, I keep going on YouTube and like checking out what kind of music people use and, and how they like turn it down. To, like, <laughs> like, yeah. The transitions and how their titles go in. And I'm just using iMovie. So mine's not like that fancy anyway. You know, I'm seeing other things and I'm like, oh, that looks so cool. And I have no idea how to do that. Um, so that's my big struggle is redoing videos and editing and ugh. <laughs> and I feel like it's easy for people to say like oh you should just outsource it like it's 
people mm-hmm. tell me and I tell myself all the time, like I should outsource all course slide creation. Like I shouldn't, like I should just hand an outline over. But the really hard part is I feel like when it's intertwined with content, because for yeah, creating yeah. a course video or creating course slides that are going to become a video that you're talking over, I'm finessing the content as I'm creating yeah, as those slides. It. And you're finessing yeah. the content as you, you're, you're making like strategic decisions as the visionary of like, what, what example do I need to show in here? What mm-hmm. text do I need to put here to make it make the most sense? And it, it's like something that is easy to say, oh, well, that's just a technician's job, like outsource that. But to me, it's very much like intertwined with the vision of the creativity and the, the course content itself. And so it's yeah. really, again, like I, I will struggle with creating course slides for months. Like, honestly, I can't even describe how, how bad I am at it and how slow I am at it, but it's <laughs> really hard for me to let it go because I'm like, well, how are you going to like, how are you going to know what to do with the slides? Cause they are like a course content creation. Yeah. I don't even make an outline when I do slides anymore. I make them as I'm going Mm -hmm. in keynote because it needs to flow and it needs to flow the way that I'm going to talk. Yes. And I want like specific examples here or I want this highlighted. I think we're just like too controlling. I I can't (laughs) picture in my head how I can hand raw video to someone and they know how to put it together to explain the lesson properly. I'm sure somebody does but I can't wrap my brain around that. So I keep doing it myself. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's hard. I mean, one of the things like is like, um, and Bev is really good at help, but like one of our assistants, Bev is really good at helping, helping me with that. And she has done it really successfully in in the past, but I still sometimes get like, no, I'll just do it. But Mm -hmm. (laughs) but sometimes it's helpful to be like, we'll be on a Skype call walking through it. And I feel like after a couple times of like being on a Skype call, like walking through the creation of slides or like that or the video or whatever is like, um, eventually you can kind of get your like brain waves over. Uh, (laughs) But it's hard. It's so hard because it's mixing the content creation with something that is just a technician, technical type thing. But I think something like what you were saying, Mariah, with using Beverly to help is she at least will create the foundation. Because I think that there is a time savings in like creating 20 slides with text on them, like having someone else create that. And then you as the creator, just editing it. I still think there's there is a valuable time saving in and at least having someone create the baseline, like copying and pasting, because we do do outlines, like copying and pasting from the outline and at least like putting the words there. Yeah, I still think, yes, we, we do end up evolving it as you actually are recording it, but at least at least you saved a little bit of time. So I feel yeah, like that's, that's true. That's good, been like, a middle successful, ground. like at least step in that direction. But I do think you both made really good points about you are the course content creator. Like it is your genius and your knowledge and your experience that is speaking. So I do feel like if that's how it's going to be expressed, I think it makes sense that that would be something you wouldn't want to hand off necessarily. Yeah. I like the idea of cutting out a couple hours. Somebody can do a few hours of the work. They don't have to do the entire thing maybe. And that's. Yeah. Like even if you knew, like, (laughs) even if you knew like, okay, I know I'm going to talk about these 10 bullet points and someone could at least take the template you have, make it the colors you want, make it the fonts you want, have any like, you know, transition, you know, sometimes we do like hierarchies and keynotes where you have like one slide Mm -hmm. that introduces the next topic. Anyways, just having someone put together the basic skeleton for you, I still think that would save probably a little bit of time that you. Yeah, that's what I do with um, my registration pages for webinars. I'm doing like a different template this time. And so I said, okay, you put all the basic info and get it laid out and get all of the like email hooked up and everything. And then I'll go in and make it pretty and make it look the way I want. So then it's at least like one hour. I don't have to deal with that. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Sometimes it's not even like, especially for with the core slides thing for me, it's like it's not even about the actual time that it takes or the work. It's the getting started. And so (laughs) when I'm looking at a blank keynote document, I'm like, (laughs) gonna die. I'm getting like major anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, like I can't do this. I'm, I'm too disorganized. Like, why doesn't my brain work the way that it should? And then 
and having Bev, even like Megan said, if it's just 20 slides that are literally just title slides with like bullet points put in, then I can be like, okay, there's something there that I can work with. I'm not just like standing, you know, looking up a mountain basically. Uh, yeah. Cause you probably know exactly how many slides you need to get to like an hour webinar or something like that. I know how many slides I need. And yeah. if I'm like, I have to make 70 slides. <laughs> it's be so long. <laughs> so- and there's zero in there. <laughs> oh my yeah. It's hard to get started. Yeah. It's really hard to get started. So I have a question. So what do you think, um, this is something that's fun that we like to do. We'd like to speculate. What do you think <laughs> is going to be like a new trend or how do you think like in online courses or online business in general, but we really like to focus on like the core stuff. Like what do you think is going to be like the next evolution, the next thing that's going to change? I think what we just talked about, what we're doing is, is what's going to happen because I think everybody kind of is you know, they just vomited all of these courses out and now you're like, oh, none of this hooks together. Yeah. None of, this isn't going to sell anything else. Um, so I think a lot of people are going to be pulling back a little bit and going down to like two courses, three courses that all go together that work people from like step one, step two, step three, um, and making it a little bit more simple instead of having like 30 courses and then people open your shop and their brain melts and they leave peace out yeah yeah like no thank you (laughs) I think that's a really good point and I think people who are just starting out like don't you know that should be relieving I feel like that should be a relief to people that's Mm -hmm. like oh I don't have to come up with a plan to make 10 courses in a year because that's the only way I'm gonna make money that would have been helpful if somebody would have told me that two years ago yeah, honestly. Don't make your like giant middle course first and put everything <laughs> into it. I mean, yeah. it sold, it worked, it was good, but it would have been e- a little bit easier to do three courses. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think that's like, it's like, yeah, it works and everything is good, whatever, but there's so much room for improvement. <laughs> I like yeah. that the, the, I'm, I'm just going to go back to the whole levels conversation. I like that mm-hmm. it creates kind of some boundaries for what what you can talk about in each. Because I think something we've struggled yeah. with, for example, if a your first one case student is asking us about really advanced webinar strategies, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, we teach some webinar stuff in your first one K with like that level one person in mind. But then they start asking about advanced webinar strategies. And it's almost like, how do I, do I say like, yeah. it's like, sorry, the take line. the course, you know, like I think, yeah. and then in yep. launch your signature course, again, webinars are important to a launch strategy. So like, we talk about webinars relating to a signature course, but it's almost, it creates these like four different places you talk about the same topic and this kind of mm-hmm. like blurry line of like how much information, like in a community, like, am I answering too much? Like, am I, am I blurring the line between the advanced strategy and the beginning one? So I love the idea of the levels and kind of behind the scenes, almost creating these like this strategy is a level two strategy. Like if someone's asking about it in the level one community, I can very confidently say like, that's an advanced strategy. Go here to learn more. I don't know. Have you felt like that's, you feel the same about it? Yeah. And it happens a lot when you have uh, communities. So I'll have, um, and then when I just launched the basic beginner free course, I put in the um, community rules that we don't talk about making money online and we don't talk about building an email list. We're talking about blogging, how to set up your blog, how to set up social media, and that's it. And I will delete anything that's not related to it. You mm. kind of have to be a brat about it. But <laughs> I like that. It keeps everybody on topic. And then all of the people that get into your free course just to like check it out and see how you're doing things, there's not that spot for them there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want to talk about those things, go into the other course. Um, And then I've had people, one of the reasons I'm going to split Badass Babes into two courses is because I've had people talking about that course just right now covers um, affiliate linking instead of doing ads pretty much is why that's in there. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've had people wanting to build info products or wanting to do courses. And so that is just going to be a whole separate course that will not be part of any of the blog traffic, email list growing content. So yeah, by separating those out, it makes it a little bit easier to be like, yeah, that's not part of this course. You have to move on up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that a lot. Those rules are important. I mean, we're starting a, we're um, starting a face like a free open Facebook group soon. Mm-hmm. And um, which 
I don't need, you know, I don't even have a Facebook until last I week. I totally when, just did that yeah. myself. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to do this on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And like, we're, I'm excited, but I think a big part of it is like, where are we going to, something we've been talking about is like, where are we going to draw the line? How are we going to mm-hmm. be like, you can't talk about this? Like, um, another uh, guest on the podcast, we had Caitlin Batcher um, last week, and she was saying like, she has a really specific rule that's like, you cannot talk about anything that I cover in my paid courses. Like we can talk about this that's stuff. We can talk about whatever, but like yeah. it has to do, if you happen to be a student in there and you talk about something that's in the paid course, you're out. Um, or if you mm. are st- trying to talk about stuff that's like not, you know, free and beginner, then like you're out. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be kind of a stickler about it. Um, yeah. I totally emailed her cause trying to cram uh, 700 people into a Slack community in one day. That doesn't work at all. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was like, oh my gosh, I need to move these people over to Facebook. So I emailed her and I was like, what is the easiest way to get this many people into a course without like exploding my inbox or having them all be like, this doesn't work or having to like just do tons of work. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so she, yeah, she helped me figure it out and yeah, she knows what she's talking about. So That's everybody awesome. got in there easily. It's like two seconds of my day now. And yeah, I put those oh my gosh. rules in there. That's actually really encouraging because even cause we're doing two things. We're starting a free, a free group, but we are finally making the transition making because now launch signature course has like 650 students and yeah. we need to move them it's too much for Slack. Like Slack is great, but mm-hmm. it's great for like 20 people or like less. <laughs> it's great. I for love like the small. separation of channels. That's like, it makes I it know. so hard to move, but I know, Facebook I has not been bad. You'll be fine. I, I don't hate it. I thought it was going to be terrible and it's okay. I like yeah. the threaded comments and the, the idea that you can have like a topic all stay together, like something we yeah. want to do that a lot of people do this with courses is like, um, big successes or big wins of the weeks or progress, like especially for a course like Launch Your Signature Course, where we kind of guide you through the process. We want to be able to have like a concise place to be like, everyone share their landing page here, you know, and that's really hard to do in Slack and keep it all yeah. organized and well, conversational. So I'm glad you you like it. But yeah, that's yeah. that's some stuff we're doing right now too. I think it'll be good. Me too. Yay. Um, we're going to wrap up soon, but I wanted to ask you a question that I meant to ask earlier in our conversation. Um, but one of the things I think about with you, Sarah, is like how, um, how good you are at encouraging people to stay in their niches and stay in their lanes. Do we talk about staying in your lane? But more than that, you talk about not abandoning your cool, awesome. Did you get my email this morning? I got your email this morning (laughs) and I've watched, I watch your periscopes all the time. And like, I just, I just, and this is something you and I have been talking about for two and a half years. Like, like this is something like when I, you know, um, I still have comic camper and it's a big part of what we do and it's like not going anywhere. And it's not something I would like just abandon, but it's, it's, I don't know. It's just something that we talk about a lot is people basically get this idea where they have this really cool niche or, I mean, it's especially frustrating when someone joins one of our courses and then has this awesome, unique niche. And then by the end of the course, they're like, I think I'm just going to teach blogging. And I'm like, what? Like, don't do it. (laughs) That happens in my course always. I know. Always. (laughs) So many times. It's hard because I don't want to be like, you can't do that. That's my thing. You know, but, but yeah, people, and I feel like people have really cool niches. Yes. And I'm like, why are you leaving that? I'll, I'll take it. I want to, I want to yeah. talk about that. The other thing is they don't have any experience in it, which is yeah. like, ugh, it just feels bad it to feels me. Bad. Your, your experience is the eight weeks you were in my course. Now you're an expert. Right. So that's another thing that I've been, um, kind of putting out there every once in a while is. Uh, statistically to become an expert at something you need to work at it or train or whatever it is for 10,000 hours Mm -hmm. which is about 10 years Mm -hmm. so no you cannot take a course and now you're an expert it doesn't work like that yeah um 
so yeah, it's, yeah, you and I have talked about this a lot. It's hard. But what would but, you say, like, to encourage someone to stick with, like, their weird ass, like, you know, how to, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of some yeah. really weird So I'm actually going to write a blog post. That's one of the things I'm going to do after this is um, email a bunch of people to get them to send me their stories mm-hmm. on creating their niche. I have a friend who writes about travel with her dog. Mm-hmm. And she travels to places to go get tattooed. That's awesome. It's like super, super specific. Nobody else is doing that. Or maybe yep. there's like two other people doing that. But she has her own thing. She's got this like adorable, goofy looking dog. His <laughs> eyes are like going in opposite Aww. directions. Everybody awesome. loves her dog. I know her um, from uh, when I lived in Michigan. Um but yeah, it it makes her stand out so much more. If she were to be like, screw this, I'm going to blog about blogging. Well, now she's in the biggest pond ever with mm-hmm. a million bajillion people. And it seems like it's easy to become known in a, in a niche like that. But it's not. For yeah. every like me and Regina and Melissa, there are thousands of people that you are never, ever going to hear of. Yep. And if you just jump ship you're in that pile unless you have something really special and amazing that makes you stand out. Most likely you're going into a a pond with thousands of other people and your cool niche could have made you like top of the heap, the person for the only person dog travel tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. And I so think I'm going to feature a bunch like, of people. That's awesome. I'm excited yeah. to see that. I definitely, um, when we do the show notes for this, we'll put the link to that um, if it's out by then because that'll be awesome. I think like there's this huge misunderstanding in this like, you know, people have this completely opposite wrong idea that that the blogging and online business and online marketing, A, the false idea that that's the only place that they're going to make real money and B, that it's easy. That like, oh, that's an easy thing to teach or that's an easy way place to break out or that's an easy place to grow a following and I just it's like we both know it's the hardest it's the hardest and the worst and every single day I just wake up and I'm just like oh my god like there's just this is so why did I pick this like sometimes I just consider just like not that I would ever do this because I love femtrepreneur but sometimes I'm just like get so down about it that I'm just like Ugh, maybe I should, I just need to go back to minimal, like blogging about minimalism. Cause like, I can't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I just can't, like, there's so much noise. And I think people for some reason think, oh, that's going to be so easy. And it's not. And it's like you said, not to be discouraging, but unless you are looking around at the market and saying, you know what, I have something absolutely insanely different mm-hmm. and really unique to bring to this then stick with like that weird ass niche that you have. And I truly, truly believe that those weird ass niches are going to be where the money is at Mm -hmm. increasingly so um, and not going to be in this niche. And I feel like we can already start to see that where it's like, well, there are 20 courses about that exact same thing. Um, Not that there isn't room for yours again, Mm -hmm. but how sustainable is that versus being like the only like I'm the only person with a course about living in a vintage camper. I'm positive about that. Yeah. (laughs) Think about like so successful jumping on Google or Pinterest and searching for such and such course or such and such blog. And you can see are there already courses or blogs about this. It is nice if you're jumping into a niche that has content already because you know there's an audience for it Mm -hmm. but especially business blogging coaching that kind of thing you're jumping into like a huge pile of people already so it's gonna be a challenge it's hard yeah yeah it's hard um okay so what are some of the new projects that you're excited about like what are you most excited about in the coming months that you're working on um that you want to tell us about and like you know things that are coming out soon that we should keep an eye out for Yeah, so I'm super excited to like revamp Badass Babes, break it into levels. Um, Right now, anybody who doesn't have a blog and you need to start a blog, you can go to exosarah.com slash dare to blog. Join my free blogging course. You get into the community with that. I'll help you with all of your blogging questions. And then Badass Babes will reopen newly revamped, all separated and easy to figure out. Uh, in probably January or February. So you got to wait a little bit. So you have time to start your blog and get it going. Yeah. Time to get set up. And guys, I can't like recommend 
Sarah enough. Like I said, like I took badass babes a long time ago and Sarah not only helped me grow Comic Camper when that was the only uh, website that I had, but she also helped me start and launch Femtrepreneur and grow Femtrepreneur when it was like literally didn't exist yet. That um, was fun. That yeah. was awesome. It yeah, was, it was nice like to like so revamp this one. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. There's lots of me being like, do this. And you're like, oh, but I don't know. And I'm like, do it. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't like this. The sidebar is all about the sidebar, I feel like. But also oh, yeah. you were like, got that fixed up. like so much stuff with like design and like, oh, you should put like, I remember I like didn't want to put a picture of my face anywhere on the website. And you I were like, can you just put a picture <laughs> of yourself somewhere on it? And I was like, no, it's not about me. It's about, it's about them. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So stupid. Um, but yeah, it's just like, um, honestly can't recommend badass babes enough and I know that it's just getting better and better every single time so I'm really excited yeah and I want everyone to take it thank you so, <laughs> so much then they can for... come to you and start selling things oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you don't have to be like oh let's fix your blog first <laughs> I know well that's a big thing I mean it's interesting because like we don't it's like we don't really teach the same thing at all and it can seem like it's like all this one big puddle but like to me I'm just like I don't have any information about blogging. I don't talk mm -hmm. about blogging. People ask us about it all the time. They're like, how, you know, blogging, doing this, social media. And I'm just like, that's not what we talk about. All I can tell you <laughs> is how to make a course and sell it really, really well. But like, I'm not going to teach you how to like blog. It's not what we do. So. And that's nice because then you're like only focused on one thing. Yeah. It, it's easier. Like I know personally, it's much easier for me to just talk about blogging over and over again. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. You get better and better at talking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Can you tell us where everyone can find you at your website, social media? Where do you want us to follow you? You can find me at exosarah.com and exosarahmorgan on social media. Yay. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. Super easy. That's Thanks. something I teach in my course. Keep One social media handle. Make it easy for people. I like that. I don't have one because sometimes my name is taken, which I'm like, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. Who else is named Mariah Cause? Ridiculous. Apparently, that's why I added my last name because I couldn't get Exocera on like two of the platforms. And I was like, well, nope, just make one. Yeah, that's really smart. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was really awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of your past and your knowledge and all the hard earned lessons over the last couple of years. I mean, <laughs> you've been doing this longer than anyone I know. So thanks for having me. Go to thefimshow.com slash five to check out the show notes from this episode. Get the links to everything we talked about today and sign up for Sarah's free course that she mentioned, Dare to Blog. And if you like this episode, please subscribe to the Femtrepreneur Show on iTunes and leave a rating and a review. Now, it might seem really small, but reviews make a really big impact and help us get more of these amazing guests for you and keep you bringing the. <laughs> I'll start that sentence again. It might seem really small, but reviews make a big impact and help us get more amazing guests for you and keep bringing you the best strategies and tools for free each and every week. And remember to go to thefemshow.com to submit your questions for us. We will see you next week.